All right, guys, for a scoliosis survey, you're going to use some specialized equipment typically. Here at National General, we have this 72-inch um, long CR cassette. It's actually built out of two 14 by 7 it's, it's, a, it's a case container that holds two 14 by 17 cassettes. Uh, and then you use a software uh, that's called stitching. And the stitching software will basically merge the two image files into a continuous image file uh, in post-processing. So um, you'll take a, an extended collimated view radiograph of the entire spine. Um, so I just wanted to show you the equipment. We're not going to go through the labor of setting up the equipment for the demonstration. I'm just going to show you what the collimated field would look like on our uh, demonstration subject. Uh, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to set up. Um, that, that cassette is extremely heavy. It's somewhere around 25 pounds. It takes almost a whole roll of silk tape to get it suspended at the right height and a lot of finagling that's just too much effort for a demonstration. So we're going to skip that part. Uh, but I did want to show you the equipment. Um, if you're at Children's Hospital, um, there's the EOS machine up with clay in the orthopedic lab up on the ninth floor of the orthopedic outpatient clinic and they have a specialty scanner uh, called the EOS machine that does a scoliosis survey with uh, almost like a CT tomogram type projection. Um, so you're always going to be working with a specialized equipment of some sort. Some, if it's a DR machine it's going to be a special software subroutine um, with an expanded field uh, if you're using CR, it's probably going to be stitching. Um, DR does also have a stitching software, but that's, that's usually with an automatically moving and synchronous moving x-ray tube and vertical collimator. Uh, so I have seen that GE has that software package where you set up, you, you show them where the top of the exposure field is, and then you show them where the bottom of the exposure field is, and then it takes two or three projections with a vertical digital receptor and then merges them automatically into a single image uh, with that stitching software. So uh, let me pause real quick and then we'll set up and show you what the collimated view will look like. All right, so this is our scoliosis uh, AP projection. Let me turn the light on. Where are we centering to? Well, we're not really worried about the crosshair. We're worried about the top and the bottom of the exposure. So look at where the top of the leg goes. It goes right through her jaw and just under the EAM. Um, now, you remember for the a AP axial projection of the C-spine, you won't see C1 and C2. So it's okay to clip them off on your scoliosis projection. Bring the top of the leg field right through the mandible with the mandible elevated just slightly. You're going to get C3 through C7 good enough. Keep the light field open all the way through the thorax, all the way to the bottom of the pelvis. Okay, so the collimation should end inferiorly at the trochanters, should extend superiorly all the way to the angle of the jaw, the gonia. Okay, now why are we open side to side so wide? Well, because with the scoliosis evaluation, uh, the radiologist also has to account for. Uh, a tipped or canted pelvis. So if the pelvis is sitting obliquely as the patient's standing straight up, um, then that, that degree of obliquity of the pelvis, that's due to different leg length, um, and that's actually subtracted away from the degree of curvature of the scoliosis. Not only that, but with scoliosis means abnormal lateral curvature, we can't comb in tight side to side because we might actually clip uh, part of the vertebral bodies as they curve laterally side to side through the torso. Okay? So patient standing straight up, just like you would pose them for an AP C-spine or AP axial C-spine, uh, the center is determined as the halfway point between the bottom of the pelvis and the bottom of the jaw. Okay? Now what kind of exposure are you going to use here? You're probably going to use a lumbar spine technique. Okay? because we have to worry about adequately penetrating through the SI joints, uh, L5, um, and uh, the lumbar spine region. That's a thicker bony anatomy. Um, some facilities, they have an aluminum wedge filter that you can attach to your collimator, 
and put a thicker chunk of aluminum that tapers, put a thicker chunk of aluminum up the top of your collimated field, and that way it thins out your x-ray beam so that you're not shooting the patient's cervical spine with a lumbar spine technique. Okay? Uh, the, the technique is actually thinned out by virtue of having to pass through about an inch, inch and a half of aluminum. It, that tapers proportionally to the increased thickness of the vertebral column as you're going from superior to inferior. So an aluminum wedge filter with a thick part uh, on the superior side of the collimated field assists with a uniform presentation of the spine from the cervical spine all the way through the lumbar spine. Uh, most scoliosis studies also include a lateral. So you just turn the patient to the side and they will raise their arms up and grab the bar just like for a chest x-ray. That's the, that's the best you can do to get the shoulders out of the way. Alternatively, uh, you might have them do the swimmer's pose, one arm up, one arm down, right? And kind of like this, and then you can see the thoracic region just incrementally better. Um, if you're unsure, you should ask about the protocol at the particular facility you're doing it at, or even better, ask the ordering physician. Is it important for them to see a lateral posture of the upper thoracic spine, or um, can we can we just pose them with neutral shoulders like for a lateral chest x-ray? It's a good question to ask. Uh, the area of interest of the scoliosis study is very important. You want to make sure that before you let the patient leave, you have a diagnostic study. Some radiologists or some ordinary physicians will want you to tack on an additional swimmer's projection uh, rather than do it uh, through the entire view here. Now don't look at the image receptor. Remember, we're not using just that image receptor. We will be using that 72 inch long image receptor and the stitching software to put all these together. So that's basically a scoliosis series. Oh, last thing, back to the AP, uh, Ms. Suter. We want to make sure we're marking both sides. So we use bilateral markers for a scoliosis evaluation, both the, above the left shoulder and above the right shoulder is a good place. Also, right above the iliac crest at about the middle of the um, uh, exposure field is also a good place. Uh, use both markers, both the left and the right. Uh, you just never know if one of them is going to get clipped. That's a heck of a lot of radiation to a heck of a lot of body tissue. Uh, you really don't want, and the, your, your patient demographic is typically going to be a adolescent so you really don't want to shoot an excessive amount of exposures with these studies. Try to keep it to just two exposures, one PA, one lateral. Take your time with it, set it up well, make sure that you're going to get all the anatomy, use a good technique, and then you won't have to worry about repeating either of the projections.